Hi there, I'm Tom Field. I'm Senior Vice President of Editorial with Information Security Media Group. My topic today is behavior profiling and fraud. My pleasure to welcome to the studio, Michael Tresner, CEO and co-founder of ThreatMark. Michael, thanks so much for taking time to speak with me today. Thank you, Tom, for having me. So Michael, ThreatMark is six years old this year, 2021. Talk a little bit about your emergence in the anti-fraud space, please. Sure. So in Threatmark, uh, we basically started as a provider of uh, threat detection solutions for online banking. Uh, but we soon found out that, as with most of the security solutions out there, basically, it is really a cat and mouse game. You are basically trying to catch uh, future attacks based on the past behavior of fraudsters. This simply does not work. And uh, moreover, it brings others. Uh, So we tried to change the approach and uh, later on we came with a quite revolutionary idea to precisely map out the behavior of the legitimate users and make sure that any anomaly from uh, that is uh, precisely assessed and reported. Only that approach is stable in time and uh, will identify even future fraud types while keeping the best possible user experience for the legitimate users. So that's, uh, that's how we started, and this is basically uh, what we are trying to offer to the market these days. So, Michael, amid the accelerated digital transformation we've seen over the past year, what are the top fraud trends to which you're responding today? I would say COVID is uh, bringing a lot of acceleration to the digitalization indeed, and that is valid not only for banks, uh, but it is visible in all verticals uh, these days. But it is also a perfect opportunity for for fraudsters and scammers leveraging fear and urgency to deliver their malicious code and manipulating their victims uh, through ever-changing social engineering-based fraud schemes. Uh, So in online banking specifically, I would say our security operations center uh, has identified and mitigated 400% more phishing attacks during 2020 than they identified and mitigated during the previous year in 2019. So it's a big increase in in the amount of phishing attacks. But we also see a lot of social engineering that include account takeover in some of its attacks phases that actually eventually lead to a payment fraud, um, money being stolen from the account of a user. Such attacks could be drastically mitigated if banks would have implemented some kind of a multi-layered protection that provides early warning, prevents account takeovers, and performs transaction risk analysis under one analytical roof. So you talked about online banking. In the banking and payment sector specifically, how are you helping your customers to secure their entire customer journey? Yeah, I would say that we try to really be securing the whole customer journey from the moment that they try to open the account in an online environment. So we try to look for account opening fraud prevention. And then when the users are repetitively coming to to the bank to actually sign up to that uh, online login to the online account, we try to uh, verify the account access. And then obviously throughout the journey, they are doing a lot of different tasks. And finally, they probably send out a payment. So we try to validate the payment transaction. We we try to look at the payment transaction risk analysis. And all that, all these three pillars are accompanied by services to help banks achieve uh, attack, achieve uh, attack or fraud response and mitigation. Michael was talk specifically about behavioral profiling in biometrics technologies. How do they help you at ThreatMark to stand out in this crowded marketplace? Yeah, like uh, I would say that behavior profiling, um, specifically behavior profiling that includes or is supported by behavior biometrics is one of the crucial technologies for a fraud detection space these days. And it will be very significant in the future. I would say this is the only approach in fraud detection that combines great detection capabilities, the great detection ratio, together with the user experience, which is a very important topic these days. So uh, in our solution, we 
really try to bring this concept of a very complex behavior profiling that includes ability to ingest uh, hundreds or thousands of data points, including the behavior biometrical specifics of a behavior of, uh, of people. And uh, we are actually delivering uh, this solution in a continuous manner so that the business can really trust the online users throughout the whole customer journey. Um, so one of the examples of a behavior profiling anomaly that we are able to spot is, for example, the user is typically logging from location A uh, from 9 a.m. from one computer that he's typically using and uh, his typical typing behavior when trying to log into the session describes his identity as well. So when the fraudster will take over the account, no matter in which means they, they will use, they will probably show a different behavior in all that aspect. So they will come from a different location than a typical user, from a different device, and uh, during, the different, during the different time of, in a day, and their typing behavior or mouse behavior or device interaction behavior would change as well. And all these anomalies can be calculated and uh, our solution will then trigger an alarm. And this approach is something that is bringing the best ratio between fraud detection and user experience uh, to our banking customers. And I believe it will soon bring uh, benefits to other than banking customers because this technology is not that uh, let's say, well recognized by other than banking verticals yet. You've talked a couple of times about the user experience. Can you go a little bit deeper into how these technologies can improve that online banking user experience? So one of the most visible examples is within an authentication and authorization of transactions. So if you uh, take an authentication, for example, you are typically these days going through a multi-step or multi-factor authentication. So first of all, you need to type in some login and password, which is known as something that you know. And then you are typically asked to either retype some one-time password from a short message that was sent to your mobile phone, or you need to perform some push uh, authentication or do something like that. So there are two factors in authentication uh, that is called strong customer authentication. And what we do is that we bring some kind of a intelligence into that authentication uh, method that might be implemented very easily with any authentication method out there. And we provide a risk-based profiling of each of those users that are trying to authenticate so that a common user, a legitimate user that is authenticated, uh, that is authenticating and is behaving in a similar way as in a previous sessions would not, would not need to go through a very complex authentication. He would be just asked to type in the login and password, for example. And in a background, our system will assess the behavior of the user in a real time and will suppress the need for the second factor. So the user's experience when trying to authenticate to any online system would be dramatically increased because they don't need to retype any code, they don't need to swipe right, they don't need to go through a push uh, authentication mechanism. And the same uh, is valid for authorization of payments where we can also ingest information about the payment itself so that the risk is even more decreased because we have a much more data points to decide uh, upon. Michael, early in our conversation, we talked about the impact of digital transformation, and it's clear that we've got the largest attack surface in history now, and the fraudsters have taken advantage of it. As we proceed further into this year 2021, into this year 2021, what are the fraud trends that really give you the most concern for your customers? Yeah, honestly, I can speak for most of our banking customers out there that are now seeing an uptick in a trend of uh, increased sophistication of a social engineering type of attacks. These are at the same time the hardest types of attacks to detect uh, by any means. And uh, it's uh, specifically because quite often there is no malware included in the attack. There are no tools basically included in uh, or used by attacker to, to attack the bank or the users. And uh, 
the, the fraudsters are quite often now trying to use a techniques that could be described as a, a remote support scam kind of technique, where they are simply trying to call uh, victims or call users of the online banking, and they are trying to persuade them uh, uh, to a payment on behalf of the fraudster, obviously, uh, to some uh, some account. And the fraudsters are trying to look like they are calling on behalf of the bank. Uh, they are calling from a support from the bank or a fraud team from the bank, trying to pretend that there is some fraudulent transaction being sent, uh, and they are here to help the, the legitimate user. But the legitimate user, when becoming a victim, will simply fall prey to that uh, that scam and will send out the, the money to an account of the fraudster. And quite often, fraudsters, when trying to do this remote scam over the phone, are leveraging a tool that is normally used for remote support. These tools are um, called, uh, for example, TeamViewer or LogMean, and there are some other other typical representatives, and they're using this remote support tool to actually access the user's computer and perform the transaction on his behalf. And it's uh, really problematic from the first typical fraud prevention solutions because all the accesses, all the behaviors look like they're coming from the legitimate computer of the user. And quite often the user will authenticate to his session and then the fraudster will take over the session throughout these remote access uh, tools. And uh, for that reason, we invented a new detection mechanism that is able to recognize that a particular session is being remotely operated through one of these tools. And this is something that is helping our customers uh, quite a lot. And I see a very big uptick in a trend of number of attacks in that rank. And I believe this will continue in 2021. I appreciate that perspective. Michael, thank you so much for your time and your insight today. You're welcome. Thank you. Again, the topic today has been behavior profiling and fraud. You've just heard from Michael Trestner, CEO and co-founder with Threatmark for Information Security Media Group. I'm Tom Field. Thank you. So